All right. Well, you know, I got to start this conversation with the fact that, you know, even though you're not really dealing with the pandemic in the show, it feels in a weird way like you kind of are because like family and dealing with family at home and everything has become such a huge part of our lives. Uh, what was it for both of you that that hooked you on this show? Was there something in particular that stood out that was like, well, obviously I have to play this part? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just, well, first of all, the team that was involved uh, was very exciting and appealing to me. I just respect everyone's work so much. Um, and then honestly, just the scripts, like it was, it was so well written. It was so funny. It was so smart. It was just a fresh take on, you know, a family comedy. Um, and it just looked like it was going to be fun to play. Yeah, and I'm in the same, just to piggyback what Megan said, I was such a fan of first meetings from Schitt's Creek and Kim's Convenience and uh, even his sketch. I mean, he's just an incredible guy and his writing, um, the scripts were just so personal and so specific. They were, I mean, to, to write a show about parenthood, which is like the most well-trodden sitcom ground perhaps ever and make it feel new and fresh and every episode felt like an episode of TV I'd never seen before was really exciting to me. Well, in terms of actually playing the characters, how would you describe them? Because, you know, they both have the things that are pulling them in different directions and the friendships and everything else. What, what stands out for you about each character? Like our characters or? Yeah. What, what, what do you think defines her starting, starting with you, Megan? I mean, I immediately just connected with her. She's, she just seems uh, like not what you usually see as like a mother on television. I mean, she isn't the, I mean, when I say the anchor of the show, like the comedic anchor in a sense, like a lot of times we see, uh, a woman on TV playing the straight man to like a cast of funny people. And like, she's the one that's sort of like grounding it, which is, she is grounded in the show, but she also gets to be funny. And it feels like a well-rounded person who's like sarcastic and dry and like fun. Uh, and, and also has, you know, warmth and is loving. And I, I actually found all of that was in the script. Uh, which is something that I wasn't used to seeing that much, to be honest. Um, Aaron? Yeah. Um, again, to be back on what Megan said, I think that I think a lot of times when you read sitcom dudes, they're just like, oh, my wife and kids. Ooh. And <laughs> like, like uh, why won't they just let me be a dude or whatever? And this guy loves his wife <laughs> and kids. And that it, it, it feels real and it feels true to certainly every real life human being I've met. And and Kurt is the writing so specific and personal to him that you immediately connect. Um, I think when people write characters that are sort of general, you know, general dad, like nobody connects them. But this is like a very specific type of guy, and every character on the show is like that, even the kids. And so people I think will connect to everybody. I love the the line too of appropriate versus not quite appropriate for kids because there's that fine line they're both doing with the, the kids in the space. Well, what is it like working with young kids like this? Because you guys are playing the family, uh, but I imagine it must throw a wrench into some scenes where you're trying to get everything running appropriately. How, how does that work for you? Well, they were animatronic. Uh, Andrew. So we just turn them off. Like when Megan and I want to swear and stuff, we just like, they're on the clap. We just, and then they go down and then we just do the scene. Uh, no, um, they actually bring a lot of play. I mean, a lot of times you have kids, it's child actors and they come in and they're like little professionals and they're like collecting receipts and things. This is not that. This is, they were, uh, they were kids and they were encouraged to be kids. And so they really, that was infectious, uh, for us they were they they want to play and they want to have fun and that's what we want to do as well and so hopefully that's that's very much in the show that's awesome megan did you have uh i guess a particular moment that clicked with you when you're starting to to film the show was it something that was like 
all right, I got this. This this totally makes sense. I mean, I think uh, uh, the scenes. Well, Aaron and I have all these scenes together, you know, and and I think that we we have a good chemistry. And honestly, sometimes like all it takes is just a good scene partner who you can like riff with. And then everything just, everything else just falls into place. And it really felt like, I mean, I'd want to like, I don't want him to hear this. But yes, it just like, when we started doing it, it just, it, it did, it clicked into place and it sort of just grounds everything. And then everything else can exist around that. But as long as, you know, we felt that we were connecting and, and everything felt real, then we had it felt like we had it we knew what we were doing you know Aaron for you obviously you've worked with Dennis Esmer for a few years and so I love seeing that you guys are kind of back doing a show together uh what's it like working with him this time because he's playing a little bit more of a weirdly mature character if I want (laughs) to he's playing a mature character let's be clear about that (laughs) that uh like it doesn't necessarily translate into after cuts and before action. Um, I you know. I mean, obviously, I've known Ennis for forever, and since um, uh, young people laughing like fifteen years ago, and so being able to work with somebody you're that familiar with really, uh, especially on the first season of a show like this, you get you're just immediately comfortable, and you're you can sort of horse around and, and you know what works and what doesn't between you and you know what your dynamic is and he's just uh, an incredible talent like he's a real wild card and he brings something new and, and insane to every season that's cool well it's it's great seeing him in this because it, it adds that other little flair of of course the the family who has this friend who's single and <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah in terms we know of each other since we were 12 it's really sticking it to everybody from St. Andrews Junior High so crazy. <laughs> in terms of filming, you you get to play around Toronto, which you know, as a Torontonian, I appreciate, and and I know you both have spent some time here. Uh, you know, what's it like putting that face on the show? Because you know, I see Roncy and all these different things. It, it's kind of fun to have that in the background. Uh, does it does it play a part in the show? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a huge part of the show. I mean, the characters very much live in Toronto and uh, talk about you know, the areas. Is that what you call the boroughs? Or- <laughs> neighborhoods, <laughs> areas. Neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah, that's it. They talk about the neighborhoods. They, you know, <laughs> support Canadian bands and local bakeries. And uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's it's nice to like have Toronto play Toronto, which doesn't happen that often. And Aaron's from Toronto, so you can talk more about this. No, I, I like all of that. <laughs> okay. um, it, it's very, you know, so often shows shoot in Canada and they have to double for some other city. And it's, you know, like we're in, you know, anyway, but they, especially Toronto sitcoms. being able to play itself, pardon me. Well, especially sitcoms and shows like this, I feel especially aren't usually set in Toronto. No, I think a lot of sitcoms like this try to take a general approach of being like, you relate to this. This could be your town. This could be any town USA. And that's, I mean, I think people connect to it more when it's in a specific place and uh, the, the town gets to play a character in the show. Well, the last thing I'm going to ask you both is I love the fact that the show ends with outtakes, or at least the screeners I saw in with outtakes. Were there a lot of outtakes would you say is there anyone in particular who ends up in the outtakes more maybe (laughs) well i don't think those are outtakes necessarily those are just like improvised alternate takes so they're sort of like i don't think you see us sort of busting a gut because we're professional kids we're professional (laughs) um but yes they're sort of different ideas that you know didn't make the the cut or sort of improvised alternate universe versions of scenes that you saw before um and those are those are super fun to do. I think it's more of a testament to sort of the kind of fun we were having on set and and the creative um, freedom and, and and just how Kurt works, where it's just sort of like let's just be in the moment. 
anything to add, Megan, to that? Or did you get, uh, does everyone get a chance to riff in the show or how does that work? <laughs> yes, yes. Everybody is <laughs> encouraged within reason to riff. Uh, the problem is, you know, we don't have them. We shot it so quickly. We did, we shot eight episodes in six weeks, which is wow. unheard of. I've never in my life shot anything that quickly. I think we did about three and a half days an episode, which is like, absurd uh and so the, what's crazy is we didn't actually do that many takes uh because be, we had to work fast because we had children who can only work a certain amount of hours and who are in quite a bit of the show and then well, beyond that the third wave of the pandemic so there's just right like eating up all the time yeah so yes there were there was there were some riffed riffages that uh, occurred uh but not as much it's as not like, like a riff show it's not like one yeah. of those shows where actors are like it's about me and my yeah. big brain it's not like that the scripts are amazing and a lot of times to be honest it seems like we're riffing but that's just the right i think uh almost all of it is just written so much like how people speak that it, it you know it lets megan and i maybe shine a little bit <laughs> Because it seems like, oh, they're just so, they must be improvising. But actually, the dialogue is so natural, it feels like that. But it's really not. Well, thank you both very much. I enjoyed the show a lot. It's fantastic to see in every way. So thank you for the time. And uh, I hope to speak to you for season two. Yeah, Absolutely. thank you so you much.